morning today. Um, before we start with the meat and potatoes of this presentation, um, I think it would be beneficial if Plamen and I kind of explain a little bit about what we do at the university and talk a little bit about um, our state university system so that you can understand a bit better the movie that we're going to show about our students and their perspectives on ebooks and online education. So just a little bit about me, um, I am the collection management librarian at St. Cloud State University. So that means basically I'm in charge of putting resources on the shelf and resources online. And this conference was a big wake up call for me because if more colleges and universities, faculty, students are engaging in open education resources, this is going to be a major ideological shift for academic libraries. And um, Plamen, would you like to explain to the audience a little bit about um, your role at the university and what you do? Can everybody hear Plamen? No. Um, let me put the microphone up to the speaker and see if that helps. Uh, we're going to plug you into another speaker. Because, because I'll be honest, without Plamen, I wouldn't even be here today talking to you. I mean, he's a... He is a dynamo in what he does. So could you explain to the audience a little bit, you're hooked up to the speaker, about your position at St. Cloud State and what you do? Hello, folks. Can you hear me now? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I am deeply chagrined that the first row is empty. I see empty chairs. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, greetings, greetings from the second beautiful weather here. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> the attendance changed drastically. Um, I'm. Uh, <laughs> I'm working with an um, instructional design group oriented by education, but they work with uh, other faculty and we deal mostly with technology. Um, I find uh, very uh, strong, very productive the connection between uh, traditional librarians like Rachel and, and myself. Okay, did you have anything to add to that? I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to go start with the slides if that's okay. Go ahead, Rachel. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit about, um, about our university. So we are a uh, public university. We are one of seven state universities in the Minnesota State Colleges and Universities system. We are considered a regional comprehensive university, which means that the focus of the faculty is more on teaching and student engagement rather than research, even though um, for our professional development and our tenure, we are also expected to do research and publish. Um, this number of students that we have at St. Cloud State University actually went up. Um, so now we're up to about a little over 17,000 students, mainly undergraduate students. Um, and half of those Almost half of those undergraduate students are considered non-traditional students. So students who are returning from a career, students who are starting school later in life, veterans, so forth and so on. Okay. Um, we offer 96 undergraduate degrees, and of those undergraduate degree programs, only 3% of them are totally online programs. Um, and 1% are considered blended. So in other words, you can get your degree through a combination of online classes and traditional classes. Um, we also offer 50 graduate degrees. And again, the percentage of online degrees that we offer um, is very small, maybe, compared to other universities, um, other university systems in the United States. Just to give you an idea where St. Cloud is, we're between 70 to 80 miles northwest of um, the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, and St. Paul. 
Annapolis and St. Paul. We're kind of like an island unto ourselves. Anything you want to add to that comment? We do not have snow yet. <laughs> yeah. So even though we only have a very small number of online degree programs, um, the, major the majority of our faculty do use course management systems uh, such as D2L. In fact, we seem to be very locked into D2L, otherwise known as desire to learn. Uh, course management system. We have a very love-hate relationship with this system. Um, and it, the entire Minnesota State Colleges and Universities system, a lot of the faculty in many of the schools are using this system because I think the entire system has a license for it. Um, there are some people who are just starting to break away. So about roughly 20% of the faculty use their own wiki um, to create a course. Um, and a little more than 10% use Facebook for online instruction. And about 5% use a combination of all three of those. Anything you want to add, Bonnet? I just can confirm that it's a um, um, kind of a complex issue. We don't have very strong uh, statistical output. We don't have a robust system to data mine. Um, what faculty are using as instructional means? Um, in the, what are the other tools that are rivaling the course management system? Uh, we hope that this will get better and when we open uh, the uh, auditorium for discussion, we want to hear you folks, how do you tackle these issues? That's it for me. Okay. So, just to kind of give you an idea of where we are with online degrees in comparison to our, the rest of our state colleges and universities, down here, these are all of the two-year community colleges in our system, okay? The blue are just standard certificate programs, and the red is associate degrees. Up here is what we all, what the state universities in our system offer in terms of um, certificates, bachelor's, master's, and even doctoral programs. We are here, okay? We are, I hate to say it, we're in pretty sad shape. We're in better shape than Southwest State University, but it's not saying a whole heck of a lot when you consider that we have a significant number of students who are coming from our community colleges transferring into our programs. So they do not have the same number of options if they're coming from community college to our colleges for online education. Pretty scary stuff. And we're supposed to be like you know, all advanced and stuff. So being a state university, you know, most of our students are on some form of financial aid. Um, we have students even living out of our car, living out of their cars in order to go to school. Um, students who have kids and families at a very young age and are trying to go to school. So would they, would they like to have online education opportunities? Um, you bet they would. It would be a lot more affordable. Um, if you remember from the map, um, if we have students from the cities coming to St. Cloud, that is that could be a 160-mile drive round trip for somebody who attend classes. For some people, it's even longer than that, two hours, even three hours to go to school, okay? So more convenient to have online classes. At the same time, um, even though we have students who are digital natives and all of that, it's not their preferred choice for classes. Most of the students, we ask them, they, they actually enjoy having the engagement with an instructor, face-to-face -face time with an instructor, face-to-face -face time with peers. Um, because of difficulties with technology integration and because the students need a lot more motivation and independent uh, academic skills in order to be successful in online education, 
It turns out that sometimes without proper support, the online education is much more difficult for our students than face-to-face. -face. Did you want to add anything to that comment? Um, actually, I was uh, hesitant if we should add something to the previous slide. Okay, we could go back. Um, because it might be perceived as a uh, um, political connotation, which is not my intent. But the former governor, Governor Polenti, um, announced uh, three years ago, announced that by year 2015, 25% of education in Minnesota should be uh, delivered online. And uh, I was flabbergasted to see that that message was uh, carried across the nation, whereas uh, the educators in Minnesota perceived it as a cruel joke. And Governor Valenti eventually recanted from this unachievable number. Uh, because what you folks see on the slide, uh, we're so far down that it was just ridiculous to assume that we can go up to 25% across the Minsk institutions. So just uh, to add a little trivia to the picture that you guys see. Okay, so I'm going to move on. That's all for me. Okay. Part of our challenge, but this is not the only challenge, and I'm not, I'm not blaming my peers in this, and I'm sure Plon is not blaming, you know, blaming peers in this. Um, but as far as the faculty perspective on online education goes, it requires a lot more time and resources to actually prepare for an online class than it does a face-to-face -face class. Um, we're also limited with our course management system. I've seen some of the open education resources shared um, during this conference, and they're really fabulous as far as being able to deliver video, chat, all of these things. And desire to learn is still very clunky. It's like very 1990s. Um, you know, um, there's a lot of skepticism among the faculty as far as whether or not their, the online experience enhances education or just simply streamline, streamlines it and might even cause them to be um, downsized and outsourced. <laughs> and one fear that comes up over and over again is, well, if we put all these courses online, what's going to keep the university from, you know, just um, delivering these things as webinars or having people from India teach the classes? Um, you know, what's going to be, are we, you know, we going to have jobs? Okay. Um, so that shapes a lot of their thinking. Fonda, because you work with the faculty and technology on a very regular basis. Do you have anything to add to that? Right, to sum it up, um, and I bet that a lot of people from the audience can resonate with the same thought, uh, we have increasingly overworked faculty that we want to entice uh, with technology, and they just don't have the time and the energy left uh, to, to put another additional item on their plate. And I'm going to put in a plug for Plowman, uh, because Plowman is like one of the hardest working guys at the university. He, um, he tries to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one workshop with faculty who do want to um, improve their technology awareness and use different resources in their classes for online education. Um, but right now, he is like a department of one because there are people on sabbatical, there are people who are going to retire. Um, currently he has a, he has a fixed term uh, person working with him, Brad Busey. Um, thanks to Brad. Actually, he, he, yeah? Brad, Brad just walked in so he's right next to me. So we, you, you folks are observed now by two people. Hi Brad. <laughs> We're going to give it up for Brad because he helped us make the movie you guys are going to see. So without him, we could not have this movie. He is our, he is our uh, film expert. Oops, slide here. So we're going to talk about um, an electronic resource that most of our students are slowly becoming aware of but not in the way that you would think. And this is, this is the concept of a, of a traditional ebook. book um, and I 
do, have done multiple studies on students at our university and their relationships with ebooks. And although there's a lot of hype in the research literature, a lot of hype presented by companies um, about the convenience of ebooks, the affordability of ebooks, most students, even um, as told by um, the National Association of College Stores, they conducted a survey last year and published it, 75% of college students still want a print textbook. Do not want online resources. I do um, an assignment with my class um, every semester where I ask them to look for an ebook in our library catalog, upload it, and talk about their experience reading ebooks. The only thing that has changed in a four year span of time is that I have is that in the past year and a half I haven't gotten any students who have said my fac my my professors tell me I shouldn't rely on any electronic resources for research because they actually they've actually had faculty confusing ebooks with websites. So that's the only thing that has changed is that now our students are starting to recognize that an ebook is as valid as a print book if it's an academic source. Okay. Did you want to add anything to that point? Uh, no, we kind of, I want to leave as much time as possible for a Q&A, so. Okay. So, one of the things that you're going to see in the film um, is some of the challenges um, that the students have with the e-books. Um, Pew Internet Survey found out that very, very few people actually own e-readers and iPads. As academics, we kind of live in a silo because we tend to be techier than the average people. Um, and we have this misconception that the digital natives have a lot of gadgets and have a, have a love of gadgets. And the digital native age group, they are actually the least likely to own an e-reader, the least likely to own an iPad, um, less than 10%. The largest the largest age group to own an e-reader are people who we would already consider um, senior citizens from 49 years old up. They like e-readers because they can make the text bigger on their e-books. And the natives depend a lot on their laptop or their phone. So. Rachel yeah. brought here point to himself and he says, I have one and I'm whispering to him that he's an old geezer. <laughs> Yeah, I, and, and I'll admit, I, I still read print books. I don't know if you guys experience this, and maybe some of our students experience this, but they haven't verbalized it, is when I read from a screen, whether it's the fancy schmancy e-ink screen of a Kindle or a laptop, if I'm not just scanning text, like if I'm not just scanning information from a website or Facebook post or whatever, like if I'm going to read a novel, or read something that requires deep thought, my eyeballs bounce off the screen. Think about that. Compare your reading experience in a print book to your reading experience on something that you have to read from a screen. And kind of be aware of how your eyes interact with the surface. It's very interesting. I'm going to show you the movie. Um, I lost my cursor. Thousand pages per this class. 
I take class with no hesitation because I have, I learn, I'm a physical learner. Mm -hmm. So cool. I have to have it in my hand to highlight. Mm -hmm. And I like to have a physical copy in my hand and be able to highlight things and refer back to it that way. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I know where I put my paper copy of a book, but trying to find it, which file I saved it in mm -hmm. can sometimes be more difficult. I usually like to print it out mm -hmm. because for some reason I have some time reading from a screen for some reason. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to be able to highlight mm -hmm. on a long piece of paper as opposed to, I don't know if you, are you able to like highlight probably on, on there? I really haven't had an online class. I've taken my first online class in the fall. And that was sociology, sociology class is all online. And with that class, I'm going to prank everything off there so I can embrace it. Because I just can't sit there and read when you want me to read, log off and come back. I have to be able to take that with me and read in my leisure time and read when I'm just at home with my kids, when I feel like reading. That was probably one of my favorite classes. I kind of had to do everything on my own, kind of, at my own pace. So it wasn't like, you know, but you still had the deadline, but you could do it whenever you could, you know? Mm -hmm. so I, I got the five minute nice. signal from the presenter, so I'm just kind of. This is going to get shared, so you'll get a chance to see it again. We have the link. But um, the, pr the presentation is available online, so. Yeah. So basically, you've heard it from the students now. And these could be students at your college or your university. <clears throat> so just to start the conversation going, um, you know, what type of open education resources are you using Students now, your school or content management systems, ebooks, e textbooks, what type of support are they getting? Yeah, so Western Governors University just moved from all textbooks to all ebooks. And the big difference is that students purchase the textbooks and we are now providing the ebooks. And so we always give them the opportunity to buy the textbook if they choose. I mean, that's their own choice, right? And many do, which we would encourage against printing a thousand pages. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to cost you less to buy the book than, than the ink cartridges. But I mean, that is, in our model, we want to just give the students the resources that they need for that course. And so we've gone all digital, but <coughs> most part, with a few exceptions, and are just providing it with a single sign-on link to them at the activity level within the course. Here's your activity, read this chapter, click. Here's the chapter in front of you. Mm -hmm. And so that's our model. Yeah. Yeah. Tuition, it's our, it's our model. We are simply paying. The tuition is very low. You can look online, wtu.edu. Yeah. We have not increased tuition in four years. We've increased a, a resource fee by $100, but that doesn't even start to pay for what the cost of the ebook is. But I thought you just said yeah. you, you paid for your tuition, but you didn't increase tuition? We did not. Well, we didn't. We pay for it just as a university. There's not a direct correlation to that project. Did you give your students all e-readers, or they just log into whatever system they already have, with the system they already have in the presentation of the ebook? <coughs> So did you hear that comment at Western Governors <coughs> University? They have a system where they offer the e-textbooks to students as well as the print. Um, the majority of the students still buy the print. Um, and they haven't raised tuition in four years, even no. though they make the e-textbooks available. We, no, no, they don't buy the textbook. We don't buy the textbook for students. Oh, no? In the, in the previous world, they had to buy the textbook. And we didn't provide e-books. Now we're providing all e-books. If they choose to have an e -text, a textbook, you think they, of course, can buy it. I mean, yeah. But what I'm saying is, you're providing you're providing the e textbooks. Yes. So as a, you know, but they have the option to buy the print. But they're but the tuition money that you're generating is allowing the university to offer the e textbooks. It's just option. a choice. I don't want to get hung up, hung up on the tuition factor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm from Tompkins Cortland Community College in New York State, and we have a very a thriving learning management system in Angel, who are part of the SUNY Learning Network, which supports that statewide. Um, but we're really you know, trying to look at this whole issue of 
uh, e-textbooks and OER. And uh, as I see it, the e-book readers are not ready yet for the potential of e-textbooks, which is going to include a lot more digital content such as video, interactive exercises, and other kinds of multimedia that many, I mean, e-books, many of the e-books don't even handle color yet. And so I think it's a moving target. We should be looking toward the future for this. Yeah, I, uh, I'm with College of the Canyons in California. We're a California Community College. We've got two sort of, big, two, two examples of this going on on our campus. On the one hand, our uh, third-party vendor bookstore, college bookstore, Barnes & Noble, provides quite a few titles via uh, the e-book option, commercial titles via the e-book option. Students like that when they first see all those those e-books cost less than the traditional textbook. However, you cannot re the students cannot resell the e-book to the bookstore as they can resell a traditional textbook. Right. So the students are actually taking a bath on the on the price point. On the other hand, we have a group of sociology instructors who, use, who are using a uh, completely open online textbook. Uh, students can read it online, they can download it, they can print it, and you never hear, we, we, don't, we don't hear any complaints from them about the, the price, because the price is free, of course. Mm -hmm. So we've got a couple of different models going on there. Yeah, that's one problem about, about e-textbooks, is sometimes the students pay for access, and so after a semester, it goes away. Um, or if they are able to keep it due to licensing, they can't, they can't resell it. So that is a problem, yeah. Oh, what is it, zero? Um, well, it looks like we're out of time. Thank you all for coming. Um, please contact us with any questions or if you want to share any research opportunities. Plum, you want to say anything to the game? Hello? Uh, enjoy the conference, folks. Thank <laughs> you.